welkom bij de Orchid Saga. Mijn naam is Ilkjan Wiersma en ik ben een Orchid Girl van de Nederlands. En vandaag dacht ik dat het een mooie dag zou zijn om te kijken naar de twinkels. Ze zijn op de linkerste kant van mij. Maar ze zijn gewoon in front of een window. Dus so de backlighting is een beetje te to hard voor filming. Dus dat is waarom ik ze in de screen heb. Maar ik zal ze op mijn potting table behind me, so I will have a close look up uh, at them, uh, at the four of them, because I have four different uh, twinkles, and they, uh, this is really the twinkle season, uh, at least for me, they start to, to bloom, and they are so beautiful, so I thought, yeah, I'm going to make a, a video, actually another video about them, because I have a, a care collab, uh, I did that last year, if I am correct, uh, but yeah, they are so beautiful, and I think they are fairly suited for this time of year because of the twinkle, the twinkle lights, etc. With Christmas uh, coming, uh, being very close for all of us, um, I'm not a much of a, a, a uh, celebrator of Christmas, but I like the spirit of the days, uh, the friendly spirit and uh, the coziness and the happiness. So that's what I what I like, and really hope that you all feel the same. And talking about you all out uh, of there, uh, I just want to say thank you because just recently uh, we hit the 900 subscribers on my channel, and that absolutely means the world to me. So thank you so much uh, because it, it feels uh, like I'm very supported by you guys on my channel here. That you like my videos and that that you even. Uh, consider subscribe to my channel to let me know that you are out there and watching my videos and uh, like I said it means the world to me so thank you so so much for that all of you guys so not only the new subscribers but everyone and to think uh, about it um, that I just uh, well a few years back I started uh, with an art channel but my life changed I still make art so probably a few of you guys are uh, back uh, from out the art days, uh, still here on my channel, but I'm now focusing uh, with this channel completely on my orchids. So yeah, we have a lot of uh, uh, people that uh, at least like the orchids and I've probably, uh, you probably grow them as well. Maybe not as many as I have. I have 400 plus at the moment of orchids, so that's quite a lot. But uh, I really enjoy filming and um, yeah, like I said, if people decide to subscribe to my channel, uh, give it a thumbs up, uh, leave comments, etc. It, it absolutely means the world to me. And I uh, just wanted to take this moment, this video in the Christmas spirit uh, to just say that, to just, just say thank you. And uh, because I can reply, of course, and I try to thank everybody and, and react on your comments, etc. But uh, this needed uh, just a spot in the video. Thank you. So that said and done, uh, like I said, I thought the twinkles, the twinkle lights, the twinkle fairies, etc., uh, really suitable for these uh, days. And they are so beautiful and they are blooming. They are really starting to bloom. So we will have some buds, etc., uh, as well. Uh, so I will uh, get the setup ready and then we will, uh, like I said, have a close up and I will discuss a little bit about how I grow them. And we just wanna, wanna see them, obviously. So uh, let's get started. So yes, there they are, my four twinkles. And I don't know about you guys, but the twinkles are something else, I think. They are so special. And these are my little known uh, orchids. I really, uh, because they are so little and so beautiful, so colorful, but the blooms are very, very tiny as well as the plant cells, the bulbs. So that's why they always uh, remind me uh, of gnomes. And, um, Fairies, I do love fairies, fairy lights, fairy twinkles. So yeah, I found this uh, to be a very nice setup uh, for Christmas as well, <laughs> just to get in uh, into the, the the nice vibe, Christmas vibe. But like I said, this is, these are the four. There are more twinkles out there, more different colors, but these four I really, really like, I really enjoy. I might one day add the cinnamon, it's more a red, reddish type even though this one is very close but i th this doesn't carry the name cinnamon but it might be close but i think that the cinnamon is a little bit more uh it has a more uh, intenser red to it and also we have the white one of course 
and even though even also you have a more uh, pink one i should say but that pink one is a little bit uh, bigger if i'm uh, correct the plant itself anyhow it doesn't matter that much these four colors are really uh, the ones that i uh, enjoy and i must say that they do better i needed to learn to grow them a little bit different than my other plants they are I found it not too easy to get them to root inside of the pots. We will have a look in the inside of the pots as well, just to see how they do. But uh, that is, um, they started to do better once I did give them uh, better light. They, they really like a uh, nice amount of light. I wouldn't say could lay a light, but pretty close, I think. Uh, but no direct sun sunlight. But they, they, and I, and they, yeah, a bright shady spot, I would should say. Which you see uh, typically with Oncidium types, but I think the Twinkles might like even a little bit more light, if that does make sense. So that's what I changed. I still have some yellowing tips, browning tips on the leaves. That's something we see fry, uh, 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 quite often with, with the Twinkles, at least I do with, with other growers. But nonetheless, I think mine are doing better, especially if you see, look at the yellow one in the back it's still a beautiful nice and green and these guys are starting to green up again as well so something is going better and the main difference in care that i do give them now than i did before is give them less fertilizer in summer it's only about 15 parts per million instead of the 150. if you are longer on my channel you know that i have a uh, care chart uh, where I did give my orchids around 150 parts per million in summer but it's nowadays 50 up to 80 but uh, I, I try to stick it around at 50 and in winter it goes even down to uh, 30 parts per million so that's a very teeny tiny bit of fertilizer and I do that because these guys are, as well do have a reservoir because I grow them in self-watering pots so they have always always a bit of fertilizer around them but just a bit and i think that was something that i did wrong when i tried to uh, let them adapt into this system i i wanted to grow them to to too quickly basically so i thought well i need to get fertilizer in there well actually yes but not that much so and i'm i'm stretching that out a little bit because it's, it was such an important part for me to get them healthy again plus the light so say, so you can fertilize them but they need something uh, to do with the fertilizer and light is a very uh, important uh, part of it because they absorb the light and then they can use the fertilizer so if you keep keep them too dark and you fertilize them you're only going to burn the roots so you need to have a nice balance in there once again i will measure uh the water so we have a general idea what's happening now we will have a look at the roots but that's something that i uh, would like uh, to stress out before we going to uh do close-up of the blooms because these blooms are like i said so beautiful so special uh, at least in my uh, if you ask me <laughs> so the first one we uh, are looking at is uh, called very simply uh oncidium twinkle brown brown orange i believe it's called but it's very beautiful and if i'm correct it's not that much uh, around at least that's what i heard when i did uh, my care collab so uh yeah and i just saw it for sale so I, I i did buy but i had no idea that this one isn't as common as other ones but as you can see it's a beautiful uh orange brownie color and i will uh adjust the camera a little bit so don't uh, get dizzy i hope <laughs> because of the light so maybe you can now see it a little bit more clearer but look at those beautiful be beautiful little blooms they are so wonderful and maybe i can even zoom in a little bit more let me check if i whoops it's very very quick but you can now beautiful see the different brown rg type colors on this one yeah, I really, really love them. I think they are very, very beautiful. So that's the first one. And here you can see this bloom. Such a almost unusual shape, but uh, beautiful. Let's, uh, let's have a look at another one. So the one next, next to it is 
has uh, almost the same color but you can see there's a little bit more red in there so yeah i don't think this is the cinnamon um it, it doesn't have uh, a correct label i believe let me check this is called a red dark orange that's all so <laughs> not much uh, in the name there but you can see this one is just starting to open up so we don't have many blooms on yet but you can see here uh, at least some blooms there in the middle of the screen now again such a beautiful shape and it seems a little bit different shape than the other one so they are apparently not all exactly the same shape wise but um they do uh, look very very familiar of course these are twinkle blooms there's nothing like it of course the parents like a sort of one um, is very close obviously but yeah like i said the twinkles for me are something different something very very special and um yeah i think this one is a, a very beautiful variety as well and this is a more reddish pink one and when i bought it it said on the uh, name tag oncidium twinkle chain chi delight if i pronounce it correctly so it might be the same variety as the red fantasy but i'm not sure uh, if it is but it looks very similar but uh, mine did have an actual tag so that's why i stick with the name and i hope my camera will focus on the beautiful blooms Come on, you can do this. I'm sorry, come on. Yeah, there we are. So yeah, once again, typical twinkle shaped blooms, obviously, and beautiful colors. And yeah, the fragrance is very, very strong. And especially on this red one, this red variety is very, uh, very powerful fragrant wise. Let me zoom out a little bit because this one is uh, always liked to put up quite a show. Oops, I need to go the other way around. Uh, do I know? <laughs> I see this in reverse, so I need to uh, find a bit. Look at that. All those teeny tiny blooms on just one spike. So yeah, it's absolutely phenomenal. This spike is uh, probably the oldest because I think that this one has the most uh, blooms open and we have a spike underneath that, as you can see not that developed but i think we will have some buds open but i think it has a little bit less blooms than this uh, this uh, very big one above it absolutely stunning almost look like a little bit of uh, teeny tiny angels <laughs> yeah absolutely beautiful so this is the third one that means that we have one left and that's the yellow one and i think i can uh, zoom out easily without making you guys dizzy and then move now I try to move in the right way yes we see some yellow and this is the biggest one I have absolutely stunning I really like this very bright yellow on this one it's such amazing and all those teeny tiny blooms it's so special if you ask me look at that absolutely phenomenal let me move again and i have some ferns in there i someday i take them out i do love ferns so don't get me wrong but they take up a little moisture this one is uh, about to open up as you can see we have some buds left like i said they're just starting to open up and there we are with some more blooms Let's try to make a nice close-up of this one as well, as we did with the others. There we are. Like I said, a beautiful bright yellow. If you um, follow my channel, you know that I'm a really big fan of uh, yellow, yellow blooms, especially ye yellow and white. But like this, this yellow with that, that orangey uh, middle, I don't know if you can see it on this. So yes, I'm back with another shot. I apologize, I needed to find a good spot because if I zoom in too much, my camera can't take it. Uh, even though it's on a tripod, it should take it, but it has, a, it has a hard time. But you can now see the orange in there. I just wanted to point out that beautiful, bright orange. But once again, it's so teeny tiny, so it's very hard to, uh, to film. But uh, 
yeah, it's beautiful. So yeah, that's the, the yellow one. Beautiful, beautiful. I'm going to zoom out again so we have them all in, uh, in one shot because they are so beautiful, especially all together. <laughs> so yeah, this is, uh, this is about the, uh, the uh, blooms obviously and the flower spike, something to keep in mind about the flower spike. They take a heck of a lot of time to develop. Especially for this one, of, of not especially uh, this one for uh, example, I should say, this is a very large spike on on this uh, this uh, twinkle, months, four or five months easily because once again it's a very large spike. This one, three four months easily. So yeah, if you see some spikes, yes, you can be happy, but you uh, don't uh, hold your breath, so to speak, because um, otherwise you will be in trouble if you want to wait to, uh, to get them to bloom. But it's something to really look forward uh, at, of course. And I remember the days when I didn't have as much orchids and you see a spike, you are, you're constantly looking at that spike because you want to see some blooms. Nowadays, luckily, I have quite a lot of orchids, so I can focus on the other spikes as well. So now it feels like uh, it doesn't take as much time, but it does, you guys, it really does. They need the time to develop, but then once they do, you can see you can get a... a very spectacle blooms out of these teeny tiny orchids. Don't forget they are so small. If you can compare them to my hand, it's just magnificent. So yeah, I'm a fan of twinkles. <laughs> um, yeah, I just want to apologize for the next section of this video. It's a very important one, if you ask me, but I did forget to put it on my mic. So therefore my voice sounds a little bit more echoey than before. And in the last part of the video, I will put it on again. But yeah, I just uh, noticed uh, when I did turn off the camera for the next session that I did forget to put on the mic. Luckily, uh, I did catch enough uh, sound, but it sounds a little bit more echoey. So I apologize just in case. You never know, of course. So I hope you don't mind, but I took the uh, beautiful orange-brown one as an example for my demonstration uh, on how I um, take care of the orchids and what I, uh, uh, of how I actually measure uh, the reservoir, because therefore we need my, um, let me grab it, my uh, pH meter. I have this in my orchid mug. <laughs> Parts per millimeter and this is a pH meter. So we will use those tools, which are very, fairly inexpensive. So uh, if you want to do this, uh, you can buy these types of uh, pH meters on, uh, on Amazon, for example. So they don't uh, need to be that expensive. But first of all, just I'm going to grab the orchid itself. And I took this one because now I, the other ones don't have this yet. But eventually you, what you will have is the older bulbs will die off. So these are soft, so I will not squeeze them too much because I don't want a fluence to go directly in the pot, obviously. But this happens. I'm just going to leave it because I think nothing will go wrong. They will uh, desiccate on their own. And as soon as this one is uh, done blooming, I will uh, repot it. And, and then probably by then I will already have the start of new growth. But if I don't have new growth yet, I still want to repot it and I will cut those bulbs off. This one is uh, adjusted to the setup, so it will not be stressed as much by repotting it. And that's from my experience. I know that I can do it if I, if I have to. Otherwise I wouldn't have do it, done it yet because I still have some room in the side of the pot. So it probably could grow on a year. Or more but um, yeah because of these bulbs I need to take it out and I will and then I will put it back uh, in a pot again and then we will even have more room for new uh, growths to grow on so that's the first thing let's have a look at the root system and therefore I need to take it out and I have this cable tie uh, through a hole inside of the pot so I can easily lift it and it's very handy uh, I found so there we go so this is actually in a mixture of small pumice um, let me adjust it a little bit so you can see it small pumice 
can see the small pommes. I have even some Lekka here. I he even have this some leftover Ceramas. <laughs> and I even have a little bit of Sintik. So yeah, basically uh, what we even have, yeah, this is uh, lava, lava rock and pommes. The dark red here, brownish red color is the teeny tiny lava rock. But this is a lekka, so it's not the same. It has basically the same color, but anyhow, um, inorganic. They can do inorganically. Don't mind the tag. It's an old tag from a family opsis. But anyhow, you can see we have quite some roots, even some roots coming uh, underneath the path. So yeah, finally, I really could uh, start to get them to root. This was a problem I had, like I said in the beginning of the video, because I had too much fertilizer inside of the pots. So I adjusted that, I barely have salt built up, even though I don't flush, because I keep it such uh, at a low uh, uh, end in, uh, in the, if we talk about the, uh, the reservoir. So let's demonstrate that one. I need to put this one down in this too big pot, so otherwise it will drip everywhere. So let's put it in the back. But like I said, I always have water inside of the pots. As you can see, it doesn't, uh, look very uh, clear, uh, very fresh, but I keep freshening the water up every uh, single week because they, uh, well, typically my twinkles need a bit of water every two weeks, so they don't drink much, but uh, then I fresh the water up. I grow for this for years, so don't uh, think, uh, oh my god, what is he doing? <laughs> so I have my customized cell watering system. I grow a little bit different than most people that grow in cell watering. And I'm not saying you need to grow uh, this way, but this is how I grow it. So it may give you uh, hopefully some stuff to think about if you find this interesting. But that's all. The, um, it almost looks like sand here on the bottom. Is my calcium magnesium uh, solution and it will stick to the bottom. But it gives a nice pH and a nice pH in this case is around 7, 7.5. Because I don't flush, I found that the pH is going down rapidly after about four or five months in this setup. So let me uh, check the pH and hopefully I, uh, it's not too low and otherwise I need to adjust it. And like I said, therefore, if I need to adjust it, I use my calcium uh, magnesium solution, the powdery stuff. I have it on my channel if you are interested in, in, in the videos. Um, so that's uh, running now, the pH, so in the meanwhile, let me uh, put the part millimeter in there as well, and that one goes quicker. So I put it on hold, and you can see, even though with the teeny tiny amounts of fertilizer that I uh, discussed earlier, in summer about 50, in winter about 30, we still have quite a high reading. So that means to me, like I said, they don't eat that much, the twinkles. So if I keep fertilizing this every watering with 150 parts per million, you can imagine that this number goes up once again because I don't flush. So I need to stabilize this number. I don't want it, this number to go over 200 parts per million. I found if I go over 200, I will start getting troubles. So this one is, uh, as you can see, it's uh, 184. That's okay. Preferably, I would have it a little bit lower, around 5, 50 or 60, but this is still okay. But then again, it uh, does stretch out what I talked about earlier, that these guys do not need much fertilizer. And especially this twinkle, particular twinkle, is not that big. So and therefore it uh, doesn't need much feed as well. Let's put this on hold so I can show it to you guys more easily. Get the excess water off. And here we are, we have a pH. I'm sorry for the glare. Uh, I'm sorry, yeah, there we go. 7.5.5, did I say it correctly? Yes. So let's say 7.5, oh, the glare, I'm sorry. It's because of the grow lights. But um, 7.5, you might think, that's high, that's too high. If we uh, have a look at the chart where they uh, show us the actual uh, part, uh, the, uh, the pH levels and how they uptake their feed. Yes, you, you, you're correct, yes. <laughs> then it would be too high in many cases. 
But once again, first of all, when we start to put them in uh, self-watering, once, uh, let's say you take them out of a bark situation, when you bought your plant, it was covered in bark and moss, etc. You take it all off. You want to grow them inorganically, so you use leca or pumice in my case. Uh, these days, this is uh, this one is already uh, for a few years in this pot, but anyhow, some inorganic media. The inorganic media has the tendency to lift that pH up quite high. Uh, when I did grow back in the days only in leca, I even had sometimes a reading of nine. nine uh, 9.0 pH, uh, a level of 9, uh, I should say. But then, even still, then after uh, a while, of course, it settles a little bit of pH, but still the orchid managed to grow roots in that environment with that high pH because I adjust the water if necessary to a pH uh, in between 6.0 to 6.3, something like that. So I pH down my water, then it goes in and the first five months the inorganic media will get pH back up. Because I don't flush after the five months it will start to drop. And then I will use my calcium base uh, powder which brings it up to 7, 7.5 like we just saw. And as you can see I have a very healthy root system. It's basically, I copy the... Uh, the um, yeah, the part where you just put your orchid in self-watering. I, I tried to describe that because also in that case it was living in a fairly, a fairly high pH situation around the roots and still managed to grow and to adjust in the system. So that means for me that it can take the higher pH as long as you adjust the water a little bit and then during the week the pH will go up. Maybe during in a, a few days but then again uh, they take enough and they, uh, my plants didn't do better than, than at this moment. I, I really uh, found a way to work with this pH system and it works with me because I don't, I cannot flush all my arcs because I have too many. That's basically, I don't have the time. So that's how I find, did find a way and that's what I called my customized self-watching system. So uh, from time to time I keep linking this video so new people have a general idea how I grow my orchids. Um, I hope I could explain it uh, as easy as possible. I hope I really do. But obviously, as usual, if you have any questions, don't hesitate, leave them in the comment section below. Because I learn from your questions. I know how I perhaps could explain things a little bit better or I need to uh, talk a little bit more uh, things more in depth etc. But you can see this one is doing fine and this one is has been repotted last in uh, 19, 10, 19 so that was uh, 2019 that's uh, and 10 so that's uh, over three years ago. It never been out of this pot because I always put a date on my tag so I know how long it's in been in this pot and I like to experiment with that. How long can it take uh, this setup, etc. So fairly long, over three years, I think that uh, says enough. Uh, for now, I think. Anyhow, I can talk about this for hours. You probably noticed that already. I apologize, I don't want to bother you guys with this, but I try to think as me when I started to grow, or even now I watch every day some orchid videos on YouTube because I love the subject. I love to learn from different growers so therefore I like to share as much as I can. I hope you uh, appreciate it. Um, that's for now about the, the growing uh, situation. I'm now going for the last shot I'm going to show you where they currently live. So as you can see that my twinkles are just in front of the window but it did, uh, do receive quite some light, some natural daylight, filtered nat natural daylight, I should say. So like I said earlier in the video, they like quite some light, and uh, but they do not need direct sunlight. Actually, do they hate it, in my opinion. <laughs> but yeah, this is a little bit um, difficult to film because the background is fairly light and therefore it, my camera makes the subject in front of it fairly dark. Uh, but yeah, I just wanted to give you an a, a idea 
where I currently grow my twinkles. And if you long on my channel, you noticed that I did have them in the greenhouse, but I did change it because the greenhouses, the temperatures uh, in summer are uh, too high for them. It's easily up to 30 uh, degrees Celsius and the Oncidium in general speaking and the twinkles as well do like, in my opinion, a, a temperature range uh, about 20 to 25 uh, during the day and at night they like a little drop uh, about 18 degrees, something like that. I can, I can give them that here in my orchid room, but it's very hard to give them that uh, uh, kind of temperatures in my greenhouse. So that's why I changed it. And I changed it with all my Ancidium. Well, most of my Ancidium, I should say, are now in the orchid growing uh, room instead of my uh, greenhouse. Uh, and they do better. So also the twinkles. So yeah, I hope uh, you enjoyed this video. I really enjoyed making it uh, because yeah, like I said, I'm really a big fan of the twinkles. And uh, so this was a very nice opportunity uh, for me to uh, really make this video all about them. But as usual, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section below. If you like, give this video a thumbs up, a thumbs up, I should say. <laughs> I really would enjoy that as well. And of course, if you didn't already have, you might consider subscribing to my channel. Thank you so much for watching and I really, really hope to see you at uh, my next video. And that one will be right before Christmas, of course. So let's see what we can find for a nice uh, uh, topic for that video. I have no idea yet, but I really like these types of videos to just take some orchids out and, and have a discussion about them. So if you have any ideas, let me know. For now, once again, thank you for watching and I really hope to see you at one of my next videos. Bye-bye. <laughs>